Langos is an amazing Hungarian street food you must try if you come here. And today we are trying five places where you can do so. Some of them really popular and some lesser known ones. So let's go eat some Langos and also learn about the history of this wonderful local specialty. This here is the Hunyadi Market Hall. It's really close to the city center, but it's a place where most of the time only locals are coming. And I cannot be more excited to try the langos here because the popularity of langos comes from the small booths which were in market halls and on the beaches. So let's go and try this out. Mm. The outside is nice crunchy and the inside is fluffy, just how a langosh should be. That langosh was excellent, definitely worth the 1200 forints price, but let's check another place out to get some more tasty langosh. Let's go! So what are the origins of langosh? Well, we don't have the exact details, but its history may go all the way back to the Roman Empire when the empire's borders were here in Hungary and this province was called Pannonia. But it may came with the Ottoman Empire. What we do know is that during the time when people were still making bread at home or in large communities using large ovens, langos was already a thing. They basically used the scrap leftover dough from the bread making process, made them into these flat breads, and the used ovens, which still had some heat, they just basically placed these flat breads inside, becoming the wonderful langosh. All right, so for our next place, we took the tram all the way over to the Buddha side to visit another market. This here is the Feyn Utsai market, and as you can see, it is really popular among the locals, plus langos. It's very clear they have langos, so let's try it. So this one already looks much fluffier than what we are used to, and the cheese is also a bit more chunkier. But let's see how the taste is. It's not only super fluffy, but the inside is also more thicker than the usual langoshes are. Most of the time, the outside, the crust, like on a pizza, is thick, and in the middle, it's slightly thinner. But here you can see that it's basically thick all across the langosh. But I really enjoy it, it's nice. Now that was a really tasty langos, although the garlic was a bit too much, at least for my taste, and probably my wife will completely avoid me today. For 1,850 forints, this is on the average side, I think it's kind of worth it, but let's see what else is out there, let's go! But first let's get coffee as well. What about the name Langos? Well, Lang in Hungarian means flame. And this kind of connects back to its history when it was made in the oven where there was still some leftover flame. So Langos kind of means something like flamed, which it is. But today, if you look at it, it's mainly made in oil. Well, they have changed this practice somewhere in the 50s, 60s, and 70s when people, as I have mentioned, on market hall booths, or the beaches came up with a brilliant idea of cooking the dough in hot oil. But the name itself is still reflecting on those very old times when flames were used. So if you eat a langosh, now you know where the name comes from. This here is the Modach Imre Square. One of my favorite specialty coffee places is actually located just beyond this arch. And there's also a Langos place where I see a lot of people standing all the time. So it must be really popular. Let's see how their Langos is. Let's go. 
Hello. Szia! Egy klasszikus sajtos tejfölöset kérnék szépen. Tök jó, 17-es? Nagyszerű. Thank you very much. Köszönjük. Így van. Wow. This one is definitely more thinner and a lot more crunchier. It's not bad, it's definitely more different than the ones we had previously because it's so crunchy, it's so thin, it's a little bit oily to be honest, maybe a little bit sweet as well, just, just a bit, but it's not bad. Interesting. You may have noticed that eating langosh with your hands can get a little bit dirty sometimes, but there's actually a trick by simply folding it in half. And thank God this is a thinner one, so it's quite easy to just fold it in half and just bite into it. This way your hands will still get oily, so you still need napkins. However, there are some places where you can get some forks and knives to eat it, but I love to get messy and I love to eat it this way. By the way, how do you enjoy your langosh? What are your favorite toppings? Let us know in the comments below. So this was langosh puppy. The langosh here was certainly different because it was so much thinner and it was kind of easier to eat it, but it was a bit too oily for my taste. It wasn't bad at all. It's an option if you come here to the city center and you want to try langosh. But I'm really curious what else is here in the center. So let's try to eat some more langosh. Are you still hungry? I'm starting to get full, but hey, this is for research purposes, so you viewers can get the best experience here in Budapest. So maybe, you know, give me some strength to eat more language by clicking the like button. Thank you very much. You may have noticed that today we are eating all the langoshes with sour cream and cheese and that it's kind of like the most traditional way of eating it and our favorite as well. But if you go here into the city center and look at the popular langosh places, they will be offering a wide variety of toppings. Some of them are like sausages or ham, but there are extreme versions where you can get like full meals on a langosh like bolognese or even purkut, which is insane. But the truth about toppings is that traditionally in the old times these langoshes or flatbreads were mainly eaten with like bacon or just on their own even sometimes with jam. So having a langosh with Nutella on it isn't really the devil's plan although I would personally never even touch that. In all honesty if you come here just enjoy langosh the way you want it. I would advise to go with some simple toppings because the dough needs to be the star of the show and if they put a lot of different toppings on it they may try to hide a mediocre or bad dough and they're also asking for a lot more money than they should for a very simple but tasty dish. And right now we are at one of the most popular areas here in Budapest where a lot of tourists come because there are a lot of bars, a lot of restaurants and this is a really hip and cool area. And one of the newest language places is also here. So let's go and check it out. Now because the music at the place was loud, here are my thoughts after finishing the meal. This was definitely the most prettiest langosh we had so far. It was fluffy, it was very nice, it was also the most expensive, but the flavors were really nice and balanced. The garlic and the sour cream met so well together. So overall, maybe you need to pay a higher price, but you have a roof above your head and you can also maybe drink a beer or anything else. So overall, very nice experience. I was very pleased with this. 
Now that you know more about the origins of langosh, you can see that it's a really simple dish. There are a couple of different versions where they may put some potato into it, but you can actually try and make this at your home. If you want to do that, then we actually have a very short video about how langosh can be made at home, what are the ingredients you need, and what is the overall recipe. So go and check that video out if you want to try making langosh on your own. The next and final place for langosh today is just behind us, close to the basilica. Let's go and check out Retro Langosh, one of the more popular places to get this dish. And let's have the final langosh of this video. Let's go! So that was Retro Langosh. It's a really popular place. You can see it's crowded. Most of the time it is like that. And the Langosh itself, it was fine. It was okay. You cannot really go wrong with this place. But was it the best Langosh we had today? Well, in my honest opinion, the best experience you can get at market halls or market places where the price and the flavor is at the right balance. One thing I forgot to call out here is that while the Grand Market Hall is also a market hall, I would advise not to go there for the langosh or any other food. They won't be the best for the expensive price they ask, so just visit it for the vibe and the architecture. Now back to the summary. But. Today I was pleasantly surprised at the place at Gosdudvar because the flavor was spot on. It may have been the most expensive one, but definitely it was the tastiest. However, if you wish to look for more cheaper versions, then you can go to market halls and get a really good experience there. But I'm really curious, did you have langosh here in Budapest? And if you did, where was it? Did you enjoy that? Tell us in the comments below and hopefully we can see you guys in our future videos where we will show more interesting stuff about Budapest and Hungary. Join us in those adventures as well. Thanks for watching. See you in those videos. Bye! Hey, if you're wondering, did we eat all the langos today? Well, we ate half of them and the rest we took home in Tupperware. Don't try to eat five langos in a day. It's really not healthy. So, okay, bye!